So now we're going to delve into the real numbers, what they look like, and how can we uh, represent them on a number line? How can we visually represent a number? So, first of all, a set is a collection of objects. One way to name a set is to use raster notation. And I have a master's degree in math. In my whole existence, I have never heard of raster notation. We usually just call it set notation. So in our text, you'll see raster notation. But just kind of stick it in your head. Okay, roster just means set. Why we call it that? I don't know. I've never heard it before, but whatever. So, sets that are a part of another set. What do you want to call them naturally? A subset. And we're going to be looking into the set of real numbers and a few of its subsets. So, two important subsets of the real numbers include the natural numbers that we've seen, we've talked about, the counting numbers, and the whole numbers. If I introduced zero into there. All right. So again, just to break it down, if you forgot, the natural numbers, its definitions, the set of natural numbers, and that's that roster notation that you can see, the squiggly brackets, otherwise known as set notation. Those are the numbers used for counting. Counting. And the whole numbers is the set of counting numbers and adding into that zero. Okay. So we can represent all of those on a number line. So on yours as well, I'm going to make this one, this line be zero. That's my starting point. So from there, I'm incrementing by one, and it goes on for forever. We don't have to label it all. But from one on, these are all of the natural numbers. And if we include zero into that, now we're discussing the whole numbers. Alright, so the naturals are a subset of the whole because I could take the naturals and fit it inside of the whole numbers. But I couldn't take the whole numbers and put it inside of the naturals because I'm larger by that one uh, collection, that one element in my collection. Alright, so now from there we're going to build a new set called the integers by starting with the whole numbers. So again, what are the whole numbers? Zero and anything to the right of that. One, two, three, four. Those are my whole numbers. And in addition to that, I'm going to add in anything negative. So negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, continuing off in both directions. So I've got the naturals over here, whole numbers, and now all together this is called the integers. So the whole numbers that are both positive, negative, or zero. So the set of integers in set notation, in that roster notation, looks like, okay, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. And again, whenever you see the dot, 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 it just says continue in the pattern that you've observed for infinitely many more places. All right, so you need to know the difference between those. Natural numbers, counting, whole numbers, add in zero, integers, add in the negatives. We got it. All right, we picture the integers on the number line as follows, like we've seen, and we want to add in some notation here. So, what happens? We have all of the positive integers on the right, integers. Zero is neither positive nor negative. Okay, later in math we will give it some um, some positivity or negativity depending on the 
context of the problem, but for now, it's neutral, neither positive nor negative. And on the left, we have all of the negative integers. And I'll use that shorthand a lot, int, int. So whenever we have both a positive of a number and the opposite of that same number, those two are opposites. So negative one and one, those are opposites. Two and negative two, three, negative three, four, negative four. You get the picture. But does zero have an opposite? He's neither positive nor negative, so now we just leave him alone. Okay, so when do I use a positive integer? When do I use a negative integer? That's what we want to figure out next. So I actually looked this up. It was pretty fascinating. In February of 1936, Great Falls had a record low of 49 degrees below zero. That's crazy. I would shrivel up and die. We want to tell which integer corresponds to the situation. So 49 degrees below zero. So we're talking negative 49 degrees Fahrenheit Celsius. Ooh, no thanks. All right, so for you, due to high summer temperatures, the Missouri River water has level has fallen two feet below normal. Tell which integer corresponds to this situation. So again, two feet below normal is going to correspond to what integer? Negative two. You get the idea. All right. So we also want to talk about another subset of the reals. And we built the integers from the natural numbers by doing what? So here are my naturals. I added in zero and any negative integer. So we built that by including zero and opposites. We like that word in math better than negative, because if I have the negative of a negative, it's going to be positive. So if we say the opposite, it makes more sense that you have to figure out if it's positive or negative. We're just saying the opposite of whatever I have. So get used to saying opposites instead of negatives. You'll hear that language a lot. So we're going to build an even bigger set of numbers called the rationals. So the rational numbers are quotients, fancy word just to say fractions. Of integers. So we have a lot of different examples. Two thirds, negative two thirds, seven over one, four, negative three, two point four, all of those things. Those are all rational. So First thing we want to take a look at, I'm going to jump in the middle here, save those for later. I'm looking at a negative two-thirds, and we want to discuss what are two different equivalent ways that I can write that negative number. So whenever we have a negative out front, we can assign it to either the top or to the bottom, that negative, because if I take negative two, and divide it by positive three, do we get out negative two-thirds? Yeah. Or if I take a positive two and divide it by negative three, do we get out the same? Negative two-thirds. Yeah. So what's the one thing we can't do with a negative? What happens if I assign it to both the top and the bottom? Is it still equivalent to negative two-thirds? Negative divided by negative gives me positive. So no, those aren't equal. So you have to be careful. Whenever we have a negative, we can give it to the top or to the bottom, but not to both because we caused this problem. It's not actually true. So that is negative a over b. So generalizing, it works for numbers other than two and three. If I have a negative, again, we can give it to the top, we can give it to the bottom, but not to both. So again, the set of rational numbers is the set of numbers a over b fractions, where a and b are integers, so we have a lot of options. And what can't happen? I can never divide by what? Zero. b cannot be equal to zero. All right. 
So I think it's kind of helpful to draw a little picture about what's going on because it's hard to see which part of the reels is a subset of another, which one is contained, which one isn't. So overall, we have a little umbrella here. Don't laugh at my drawing skills. Eh. Yeah, not so bad. <coughs> a little funny. And kind of the big daddy is the rational. So he encompasses all of these different numbers. And inside of there, we've got the whole numbers. He fits inside of the rationals as it's raining. And we've also got the integers in there. And arithmetic numbers. So the whole numbers and the positive fractions. We kind of have funny divisions for these things. And we even have negative rationals. And inside of the whole numbers are the naturals, because the whole numbers we just added zero. And the whole numbers are inside of the integers. So it gets a little bit confusing, but it's just a general picture. We have rationals. And these kinds of numbers fall under that category. All right, so on a number line, we want to go ahead and draw a few rational numbers just to see what do they look like? What are we exactly talking about here? So again, I'm just going to make the center tick zero so I have some kind of direction. And let's just put some on there. So one, two, three, positive four. If I plot him on that point, I don't know if you can see it. Let me get a little bit bigger. There we go. He's a rational number because I could write it as 4 over 1. That's fine. And things that are in between, like 1 and a half, a decimal. That's rational as well. It fits inside of that category. I still have all of the positive rationals over here. So these are just a few that I'm picking. We have a lot more options. I also have all of the negatives on the left. Negative rationals. But again, I could pick some, like negative, this is one, negative, three halves. You could see it in that form, negative 1.5. Negative 2.7, so I've got one, two, halfway, a little bit more. We get the idea. We encompass a whole lot of numbers when I talk about the rationals. All right, so graph each number on the number line, just so we can tell where are these with respect to kind of my starting mark of zero. I'm just going to go down the line and make them all line up. And the first one we want to graph, negative 4.5. So I go over negative 1, 2, 3, 4, and half. So that's negative 4.5. To graph that second one, 13 over 6. Does anyone know where that is on the number line? When it's in that form, not really, but we can approximate it. If I do the division, it's around 2.16. Now I have a better idea of what it's looking like. So 2 and a little bit larger. Around there. All right. So for you, negative 7 halves. Graph that on the number line. Where is that going to happen? It's around what value? Negative 3.5. It's exactly equal to that, actually. So I've got negative 1, 2, 3, and a half, negative 3.5. And you could plot more than one point on a number line as long as you're labeling them. 1.4 is going to be over here. 1.4. So we can estimate and get a good idea visually where a number is on the number line. 